OK, let's hit the V key to go back to our main selection tool. Let's click on the fill area here for our path and just delete it. OK, we're ready to start using different shapes. Now we can also turn off the transparent background and fit this page in the window so we see all of our guides and remember that shift command D on the Mac or shift control D on the PC to turn off the transparent background and command or control zero to fit in the window. And what we're going to do is take a quick look at some of the tools for generating shapes. Now over here in our tools panel you can see that we have the line tool. Okay, If we click and hold on that you'll see that there are a series of other options like the arc and the spiral a grid option and a polar grid as well and a couple of these we will use throughout the training basically any tool that has a small triangle here on the corner means it has what's called a fly out menu or a tear off menu so likewise here in the rectangle tool if we click and hold you'll see we have basic geometric shapes rounded rectangles ellipses polygons stars and a lens flare type effect tool the cool thing about these and like i said all of them that have this fly out is that on the right hand side here we have what's called a tear off if you just select that and let go you'll see we have the ability to pull all of these tools out onto the page at the same time which is very handy if you need to keep constructing one or the other now we are going to start with just a default rectangle and what I want you to do is put your cursor on the very top left hand side of your A4 sheet and we'll click and drag all the way down to the lower right hand side and you'll see that everything snaps into place okay that's absolutely fine alright let's go ahead and undo that Let's come down here into our guide areas and use these really nice guides and accurately positioned ones that we created and we'll click and drag in this area here. This is essentially what would be our text area later on. Now, as you've already seen, every single element that you create by default is filled with white and stroked with black. And to be honest, the fill color is not so much the issue. It's the fact that the stroke color is always there requiring you to go to the stroke and remove it if you're in a process where you really don't need strokes. Well, like I said, we can change that default and that's exactly what we're aiming to do here. Now, we're going to hit the V key again to go back to our main selection tool so we don't accidentally create any further rectangles. And if we come over either into the color palette, but more importantly over here, this is a little larger and easier to see. As I said before, this shows you the fill color and also the stroke color, okay? Now, there are two other items in this palette. The first one is a small arrow, which, as you can see, says swap fill and stroke. And down in the lower left is our default, and that's where our D key shortcut came from. So if we wanted to switch the fill and the stroke around the other way, I mean, it is possible that sometimes you'll fill one and stroke the other and realize they should have been the other way around, you can simply hit Shift and X, and that will do precisely that. So that now fills with black and strokes with white. That's pretty cool. On the other hand, just the X key on its own will allow you to pull a selection, uh, i.e. we currently got the fill selected. If we hit X, it will select the stroke, okay? So you can switch back and forth between them, and you'll see the color palette is also changing because we have a white stroke. If I hit X, we have a black fill, and we're basically eliminating a click here. It, it just allows you to navigate faster. Now, the reason I'm doing this is I've hit X so I can bring the stroke to the front. Then a final keyboard shortcut is the forward slash, okay? On, on your keyboard, just under the question mark, if you hit forward, slash it changes the current selection to none so if we had fill selected and hit forward slash you will get fill none what we've done here is selected the stroke and removed it now let's also hit x so we can go back and have the fill selected and we'll come up here to our color palette and make a very quick change let's make sure that we come over here and choose cmyk remember this is rgb just from previous documents that were open and what we'll do is drag our black value down to i don't know 20 25 percent something in that region so let's say, for argument's sake, this is the default that we need to use, okay? Now, like I said before, the D key is your default. If you hit D now, it's going to undo everything and put us back to a white fill with a black stroke. So just undo that. What we want to do is make the default what we have selected. Well, the default style is stored over here in the graphic styles palette. If you open that, this is the culprit right here. Easy enough for us to update. Simply take this new object, and it doesn't matter what color it is, however you've styled it, that can become the default. We'll drag it over here, and as you do so... Hold down the Option key or the Alt key on the PC and drag it onto the current one, okay? That, you can now see, has replaced it. We can see it's completely different. So now if we went back to our Rectangle tool, let's just drag a, a new one out. You can see it's filled gray because that's the current selection, but maybe let's come over here and, say, fill it with bright yellow. Again, if we now hit the D key, it's going to fill it with our brand new default graphic style. So just changing a few settings there and option dragging it over the original has given us a little bit more flexibility.